Today in Let's Play Cars, we have a look at my USA Bomber deck, as well as the most popular cards in the cards community. Well, gentlemen, now I can tell you, we're going to Tokyo, and we're gonna bomb it. Greetings and welcome. I am Mingle, and this is Cards, the World War II collectible card game by 1939 Games. June the 6th, 1944, the largest seaborne invasion in history ever to take place by Allied forces. 75 years onwards, and Cards is to commemorate this historical event between the 6th and the 9th of June 2019. You are to receive five fault gold rewards for your first win in that time period between June the 6th and the 9th. You can sign up for a contest on Cards' website, Facebook website, stand a chance to win $25 worth of packs, as well as they've got a special, the D-Day offer, where you can buy the British and the USA emote card back decorative skins, two for the price of one also known as D-Day. I had a fever two days ago and I thought I was gonna die. All that being said, at least I'm better now. And that's the reason why I'm a bit late with this week's episode. It is now the 8th of June, so you've only got today and tomorrow to make uh, use of this offer from Cards. So be sure to get in there if you are interested in this offer. My challenge and deck of the month is a USA bomber deck named Bombs Away LeMay. Curtis LeMay was a United States Air Force general in that uh, World War II and after period and if you want to know more about him I will have a link uh, to his uh, wiki below in the comment section description area if you want to know more about that general. That being all said let's jump in and have a look at my Bomber deck. Alright. So, what I did is I merged my Bombs Away deck with uh, Germany faction as an ally. Let's quickly run through. I'm not going to go into all the stats here. I'll just quickly go through my current standing of the deck. I will have the build available down in the description area. Fun. I enjoyed playing with Germany, so I merged my majority of my decks with Germany. Game of the week. That was the first version with British. One would think that British would be stronger as a fighter bomber deck. But I enjoy playing with the Germans and I've got strong German cards. So I next. Seems I will be going up against a Japanese, probably Rush deck. Burn. Peace through strength, my friend Glacier. So I noticed um, a lot of people actually implement the Greyhound with the bomber decks, so they send the cheaper Greyhounds to the front line. And what they basically do then is. Let me just think here. Should probably not do this now. And then what they do is then, then obviously when the ground's in the front line you'll boost the damage of the bombers in the defense line, which makes sense. Maybe I'll eventually still put it that. Oh, so he's got a British ally. It's, he's probably gonna take out Jasko. I wonder if it's a bit too premature for him. So yes, as you can hear, I'm not as enthusiastic as usual. I'm still recovering from my illness. 
So I do apologize that I don't have the same old, uh, what can I call it, the same uh, uh, enthusiasm slash uh, pizzazz as I usually do. Same energy than what I usually do have. The junkers, oh sorry, there's not a junkers, I'm thinking of this one. The Henschel, it's a very powerful card. Let's put down the junkers. I'm playing with my comment. Four, five, six, seven, eight, that's enough. That train is gonna roll in. We have to move some of these things to the front line. Glitch like that. Ooh. Not nice. Okay, let's do that. We can torpedo this one. Move that one to the front line. Pull that one. Expecting me to play, we can do it. You can't move, bro. You don't have enough credits. Sorry, man. Oh, okay. So I'm still gonna torpedo your ass. Not sure. Is he gonna fire? Let's give him smoke screen. Let's move him to the front. Excuse me. Well, that backfired. Ooh. I don't have anything for that. don't want to use my comment. Yeah, that really messed me up. It's got fury as well. Four, five, six. Oh, it's terrible. Not, not good. It's going to have to be done. What's this got? One, so it's four, five, six. Okay. So yeah, I implemented pattern in this deck. Six. Let's 
give him I've got more cadet nurses, y'all. thematic um, thinking of Pearl Harbor the nurses meeting the fire boy and that's the weakness of my deck if I go up against uh, infantry they just kind of take out my bombers mm -hmm. so this is a card I actually want to use with Petten as well It doesn't have anything to take out my Jasko for. Hmm, I can't afford. This is not good. This is not good. Four, five, six. <laughs> Oh, look at that. Not good. <sighs> mm -hmm. Let's just play on the bubbles HQ. I'd like to move on to the front, but it just feels like I'm doing so much damage, I just might as well just keep pounding damage. That's a shitty game. Yeah. GG, my friend. So if this was my first win for the D-Day commemorate event, I would have received 10 gold now. Basically a free pack. The devs have made the following metrics known, and I will mostly be quoting. Let's take it from the top. Let's start by looking at the popularity of the nations. Here is a pie chart showing the percentage of each nation as the major power in the match ups by players in the officers club during the month of May. We can see here that Germany and Japan are the most popular major power nations with USA in the last place, but the difference is not that acute. We can drill down even further and look at the stats for players in the officers club. A. In the highest echelon matchmaking rating MMR Remember that the MMR is not the same as the officer club points, though of course there is a correlation between the two and B have the majority of the cards in the game, i.e. they are not really restricted in what they choose to play by what cards they own. The stats here are very similar in the following chart. 
by chart. So yes, I feel um, the, the, the factions are spread very evenly. It's very seldom you get in a CCG card game where people play all the factions as equally as they currently do in cards. So that's good. And then next up we can see we see regular debate on the advantage of going first or second in the game. This is a metric we track rigorously as a big imbalance here will it will have a drastic effect on the game. Let's look at the metric. So as you can see it is pretty much 50-50. The main thing to note is that there is a slight advantage to going second, around 51% on average. The advantage is too small to advocate for any major changes to the starting setup and digging deeper into the data shows that things like deck matchups and mulligan outcomes matter much more when it comes to determining a likely winner of a match. These are the 15 most crafted cards in the month of May. There should be no huge surprise here. The list of course reflects most strongly the meta game and the early game. People that are growing out of their starting decks and aiming to upgrade to more competitive decks that do not require huge investments in elites or specials. This meta game resolves around deploying hard to deal with threats like the 40 second rifles and boosting them like using the naval support on Churchill or the 84th infantry regiments. As the environment is not as removal heavy as higher tiers, the most surprising inclusion here perhaps is number 10 commandos, indicating that the commander deck is growing out of just being a fringe novelty deck into a regular part of the meta game. We're also seeing commandos pop up in various different shells, so players are definitely finding success with them in all kinds of ways. Looking at the higher rarities, there are two cards of special rarity that are ahead of the others. Those are the Tiger 1H, the most crafted special, and the B17 Flying Fortress. Both are, of course, super powerful, and we're happy that such iconic units of the war are being a big part of the game. The third most crafted special in May was Crusader MK2, emphasizing even more the popularity of the order heavy commando deck. That being said, let's have a look at the top three crafted elites in the month of May. First up is the one I crafted, first signal regiment. As you can see, smoke screen. It's a one cost, four, zero, four, Smokescreen. When another friendly unit is destroyed, deal one damage to the enemy HQ. So obviously one wants to have a Japanese cheap rush burn deck. And when your opponent takes out your units, you actually deal additional damage to his HQ. Next up is my Commonwealth deck I used, well, the Commonwealth card I used in my Commonwealth deck in my first seasonal rank play. I opened this one in a pack. Deal 20 damage to enemy HQ. If your HQ has 30 or more defense, draw 4 cards. And then the third one is Leopold. German card. Deployment. Send all enemy units to their owner's hands, which is a 10 cost, 3 movement, operation cost, 6 4 artillery card. I want this card, so I'll probably craft this one next. Very powerful. And then the Commonwealth was a 12 cost uh, order card. And the Leopold is a unit, artillery, and the first signal regiment is also a unit, infantry. Alright, so that is the metrics for the month of May regarding cards. And that is it, my friends. Thank you for watching and sticking with me until the very end of this episode. Uh, we'll catch up with you fellows next week. And as always, have you all have yourselves a wonderful week. Lakadach and bye-bye.